No, it wasn't in the script. I took one look at that baby and I said, put that thing on my tit, man. That was, I said, pitched I, I pitched it. You know, all we did was tell one lie. Hundreds and hundreds of times over many, many years. We really do have a safe environment to take big swings. What if we hire an actor to play Stanicki? Great, not gonna work. Building chemistry with Zach is very easy. Um, <laughs> Obviously, so he's gorgeous. When you get out of surgery, all right? You should drive out there. Ricky's been there for you guys your whole lives. The devil's in the details, my friend. It worked. Atlantic City, here we come. No you know, set beefs. No set beefs. No. No diva. There was one diva. Well, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he tries to make a point, it's like he's smoking invisible dogs. Dear God, it's true. He had some ideas. I had some ideas. I practiced air dicking for a month. To support. Now it looks like I'm cupping the balls. Oh, God, that there one, was. That one there was one diva. diva. Yeah, Ugh. not a fan. Not a fan. But we were good. We me were and, fine. Me and Angie were perfect. We were perfect. Uh, I love that you're you've you've had a really interesting good year here, Iron Claw and this. What was it like working with Peter and and kind of going about going back to your comedy roots? You're really funny. It's it's so fun, man. It's great working with Pete. Anything Peter does, you know, it's you know, it's it, generally it's it's a comedy, but it's it feels very um, it feels very honest. He's always searching for the truth in it, you know, and and. Um, I think you, there's always something very redeeming, uh, at the same time funny, about all of the characters that Pete makes his stories about. So uh, it was really fun to, especially after the Iron Claw, to, uh, to come back and really just hang with the boys and have fun with Pete. It was really nice. Yeah. What we got? Ricky's cancer is back. Why does it have to be cancer? Won't everybody get worried? Yeah. And that's going to take us right into the World Series. You, I love the fact that they made a character that is gay in one of these films because usually that's not that way. And it's so, it's treated as part of the story, as part of the character. That's such a, a nice change of pace. What was that like for you kind of stepping into that? Well, when I read the script, I loved that the character's sexual preference wasn't uh, a part of the joke. He was treated like a normal person, a regular person. He was one of the boys. He's just, he's a friend, no matter what. It wasn't like some token gay black dude. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. just a dude. And that's what I gravitated to. I spoke to Peter on the phone about it, and uh, we all just were on the same page about how to portray this this this, this character. So that was, uh, it was great, man. It, it was great. I thoroughly enjoyed um, watching, you know, playing Wes as this kind of troubled, you know, truth truth seeker, so to speak. My baby's gonna be born six weeks early. I was born six weeks early. Oh, shit. Uh, John, uh, any plans on taking Rock Hard Rod on the road? Because I, 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 w I think a lot of people would want to see that. I've uh, been living the gypsy life for about 20 years. I think I, that chapter's winding down for me. But never say never. <laughs> I mean, dude, this was really funny stuff. I've always thought you were just such a, ever since that train wreck, I think, just so funny. How did you get involved in it? I mean, you 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 go for it with this guy. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for for those comments because I guess that's that's all that you try to do. You try to give all you have and then let as many people know to go to go see the movie as you can. Uh, when I look back at this, I can honestly say that I didn't leave anything uh, on the bench. I put it all on the field. So all on the field, right? I think it's also uh, surrounding yourself with funny people, and that helps. Uh, I don't know if the movie is that funny without our entire cast and certainly without our director and without our story. So um, I appreciate your comments because I want to try to give everything to every opportunity I get. And to hear you say that, it, it warms my heart. But um, it, it sounds so sports cliche, but it is, we, are, we are only as strong as our team. And our team was very good on this one. Well put. That's right. I want to know where the hell you guys were tonight. We called every hospital and there was no record of a Ricky Stanicki. No, it wasn't in the script. I took one look at that baby and I said, put that thing on my tit, man. That was, I said, pitched I, I pitched it. No, mm. that was in the script. They wanted uh, skin to skin contact. I think it was an article that someone had read that the father must have skin to skin contact. And uh, then the rest is comedic history, I hope. So. That wasn't me, that was them, but it was super fun. Easy to do, uh, because it was, uh, because, <laughs> it, it, you know. I think one of the really fascinating and, and uh, fun parts about working with Pete, 
fairly. He's, he's, he always keeps it on track. So uh, if you have a great improv that fits into the story and is honest and tells, in, it's, it's in service of the characters and where the story's headed and it's in the tone of the film, then it stays in and, and the rest gets cut out. We really, we really do have a safe environment to take big swings. Rock hard rod, X-rated rock and roll impersonator. I do a whole act, wall to wall, top to bottom, jizz jams. Thanks for coming out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So horny to be here. It can be funny in the moment, but if it's only funny in the moment and it ruins the story, then you just get a, a laugh track joke and it doesn't pay off. I think it's very important, and ev to, to everyone's credit, uh, Jeff Ross included, everyone understood the whole story. Mm -hmm. And although they, they added jokes on the day, they also were, were very humble when people was like, great, not gonna work. We need this. <laughs> right. Because this pays off here, remember? And everyone would say, yes, okay, great. And that's the fun part about you know, uh, making this movie, is if that, you always, the, the goal is to make a great film. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and it can be funny, it can be dramatic, but there's gotta be proper motivation and, and truth uh, in all the performances, and that's what Pete does so well. So it's, it's got everything, man. I'm excited for people to check out the film. This is a really bad idea. Oh, oh Jesus. I've been cold turkey in the booze. Ricky Stanicki's in the program, remember? Oh, Rod. It's not what you think it is. It's just piss. I'm a you know, I'm watching this movie and I'm seeing these the, the boys club. You really hold your own here. What was it yeah. like being a part of this world and, and working with these 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 guys so much fun i had a blast i loved being in the orbit of peter fairley we've worked together before um and then being able to share the screen with with zach and with john cena it's just it was it was a lot of fun um never a dull moment even our bloopers are hilarious we just we had a great time with this film this is ted Summerhays, my boss ted nice to meet you digging the suit and the seedlings man the seedlings the hair plugs are new, right? This is my hair. We're gonna lose our jobs. Dude, you've been, I've, I, 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 such a, I, you've given so many amazing performances. Thank you. What was it for you to kind of step into with working with Peter and finding this guy? Well, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> 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 I thought it was so outrageous. And I thought, how, how can you pull this off? Yeah. He had some ideas, I had some ideas. I practiced air dicking for a month before I got there. <laughs> when I read the script, I, I laughed out loud and I was moved by the end. I thought it had a really lovely ending. Love the characters. I think everyone, if you read a script quickly and, it, and you see the movie, it's, it's easy to know which one to do. No, that was all in the script, but also John was like 100% committed. He wanted to do this badly and I didn't have to talk him into anything. He was like more than, more than game. Uh, but I agree with you. I saw when I saw Peacemaker, and I'm not a huge, uh, you know, comic book type thing, Marvel type thing. But someone told me they said you should watch Peacemaker. This guy is too funny. And I remember watching two or three episodes, thinking this is the funniest big man I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's he is so. Uh, Funny in a, he's like a small guy in a big body. His sense of humor, and I wanted him badly in this thing. But no, he he committed. He wanted to do it, and I didn't have to talk him into much. I was really taken with your friend Stanicki. He's got brass balls on him. That guy. That's why I hired him. That's awesome. You just said. What did you say? Just say it one more time. He knows his comedy so well down to the timing um if there was something where we weren't nailing it timing wise to really get that joke to really nail that button he would come in and honestly kind of perform it and give you an example of exactly like how he hears it and how he see it and we all trust him so much that we're kind of like yeah that was that was great. Okay, let me try to let me try to do it like that um, because he he takes the the comedic timing in general. I think is really difficult. It's a hard skill to nail. And I come from dramatic acting, so this was my first time really having you know being a part of a, a, a comedy, and um, I learned so much from him and really trusted his guidance and the guidance of you know our stars. I think Andrew Santino, you know he's quick. He's on his feet. He comes from stand up. And so learning from him, even Jermaine Fowler, learning from them, these are stand-up guys and being able to improv with them and um, 
just just feeling how it works in in the world of comedy i learned so much on this project you know peter has been a part of obviously some of the greatest comedies made in the last few decades what was it like working with him and kind of finding his element and finding what you know the kind of truth in the in the gross out humor as it were andrew i mean it was easy you know it, pete's been somebody that i've looked up to since i was a ute uh <laughs> sitting in my mom's basement Mom and watching dumb and dumber on vhs like I, I mean you know i have a strong history with what he made so my connection is different than uh you know than other directors i've worked with i mean i you know i was actually a huge fan and uh it was incredible man i i don't know what to how to say it accurately but working with pete was a dream come true in a way that little 15 year old me would be like you know holy shit you're working with the guy that did dumb and dumber and and his comedy is just as good now as it was then his chops are the same uh, if not elevated. I mean, he's just smarter now than he was. The comedy choices are just as fun and unique. So um, he's, uh, in the comedy world, he's aging very, very well, in my opinion. Yeah, um, he, he's, he's extremely giving. When you need um, when you need context for your character, he'll uh, help you find it. He'll, he'll, he's, he's really good with pitches. Uh, and the one thing he's on is just story. He just, he's obsessed with story. And uh, as an actor who's obsessed with story, like, it's, it's refreshing, especially in a comedy. So yeah. uh, I know it's a comedy, but like um, the story is so important. And you know, I, I think that's why this one feels so um, um, big to people. They're responding so well to it. I think that's why people love it so much is because of that. It's all Peter. No you know, set beefs, no set beefs. No. No diva. There was one diva. Oh God! That there one, was that one there was one diva. diva. Yeah, Ugh. not a fan. Not a fan. But we were good. We me, were and, fine. me and Andrew were perfect. We were perfect. Uh, we love Chinese food. Ate a lot of Chinese food in love Australia. Chinese a lot food. of Chinese food in Australia, by the way. A lot, a lot, a lot of Asian. Like there was Thai, there was yeah. Filipino, there yeah. was a lot fusion. of fusion, a lot of fusion, a lot of fusion. Vietnamese food. We got a yeah. lot of different kinds of Asian fusion. We were also halfway around the world, so it was nice to be able to bond and not sit in our hotel room alone. Uh, you know, so it was, that was that also helped the chemistry. It wasn't deliberate, but I think it worked for the film. Yeah. Well, it's funny too, and you, you, I've, I've, I've been, followed your career a little bit, and I've seen some of your work, obviously, and uh, you know, you've been a part of the Purge, so you, you do horror movies as well. Yeah. Do you find a kind of, a, I don't know, a balance between doing horror and comedy such as this? You know, the funny thing is. Um, <laughs> I had so I had too much fun on the purge. Purge for me was comedy because it's it's like trying to learn how to be scared when it's not. It's kind of silly, you know, like it's kind of funny and you're kind of laughing at yourself a little bit. And um, so it's 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 interesting how that actually happened. But to balance it out, you know, it's it's kind of the same. I think I my personal style is is trying to live truthfully within the circumstances as much as possible, whether it's horror, drama, or comedy. Erin's character in Ricky Stanicki, her whole, she was the anchor, I think, for the actual story itself and what was happening. And all I had to do was just exist in that and just be the supportive girlfriend who wanted the best for her mate, who wanted the best for his friend because, you know, Dean cared so much about Ricky. I'm just existing in that reality. And as I'm as as Aaron is learning and picking up on things and cues that something's not lining up again, just existing in that reality of trying to figure out why something is off here. And eventually she kind of cracks the case um, before <laughs> before Dean is even aware that she knows what's really going on. Now you and uh, Zach have a, a nice little chemistry going on. What was it like to build that kind of relationship with him? Oh, the, building chemistry with Zach is very easy. Um, <laughs> obviously, he's gorgeous, but beyond that, you know, he's just a he's a fantastic person. We had such a great time from the minute we got to know each other. We kind of just dove into talking about life and talking about acting and different experiences from other sets and family dynamics. We just had we had such a great time. We really, really became friends. And even still, we keep in touch and check in on each other all the time. Um, even if we have like a, an event going on, we'll text like, hey, are you going to that thing? Like, yeah, I'm going to be there. OK, see you there. You know, we just we really built a, an awesome camaraderie with with him, but also all the guys. Um, Andrew, we keep we keep in touch. I saw his stand up. Jermaine and I keep in touch. 
Anya and I even keep in touch. Um, even she's in Canada and we, and we adore each other. So um, a great, great camaraderie was built on this set for sure. Peter, I want to start with you because, um, you know, I you've made these movies that have a really strong balance between over the top grossed out humor, but characters you can kind of give a shit about, you know, people you're, you want to invest in. What brought you to this story and this, about these three guys making up Ricky? Um, someone sent it to me about 15 years ago. It was, there was a, a kind of a rough draft of what it became. And I like, I love the concept of, of what happens when your lies come to life. When you've made up these lies and all of a sudden you got to live with them and, and how do you, you know, balance them? And then why do you lie, you know? Uh, it, it, there were a lot, a lot of uh, reasons. But by the way, the, what you said in the beginning, I remember my favorite, the, one of my favorite movies of all time is Airplane. And I love the Zucker Brothers. But I remember thinking, what if you really cared about the people on that plane? Like, That's I right. mean, gave a shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it was so broad. And by the way, that was their style and that killed. It's, you know, arguably yeah. the best comedy of all time. But... It occurred to me when I started doing it, I thought, what if you, there's a little more you care about these people? It might elevate the comedy. That was my hope. I've always, um, I've always chafed at this. I'll say, what, 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 what do you, what's this joke here? This is, and they say, but it's funny. And I go, yeah, but it's not true. It's, it's, yeah. It, being funny is not the the goal. It, you have to hold yourself to telling a, a true story that has something to do with the, what it means to be human and be funny. Hmm. I, I, in my life, my career, it's I've been lucky where I look back and like, I can't imagine anybody else in that role, and yet they probably weren't the first person. Starting again with, I keep bringing up Dumb and Dumber, but Jim Carrey was the 150th guy we offered that movie to. Everybody really? passed. Every studio passed, and then Jim comes along. I'm like, Can you imagine? Like, I, there were so many people that like, no, 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 and then you get the right one. So, I always say, just leave it up to the universe. Mm. They might be. Boy, if you get it wrong, though, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. 